Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to do a dramatic child portrait edit in Lightroom. Theme tune. Do -do 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 -do. Whoop. 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 That was me swimming in water. The swimming water dance. Anyway, so this photograph was sent in by somebody called Ali Sabi. So sorry if I got your name wrong, but it's a beautiful child portrait that has so much drama in it. And I'm gonna show you how to enhance that drama and really make this image amazing. So this is the image just here. We're in Lightroom. And let's look at the library. So this was shot on a 50 millimeter ISO 100 uh, and it was F 1.8. So a nice shallow depth of field on a Nikon, Nikon D7000. Let's jump into the library module and have a look. So the image is nice and sharp on the eyes and the child just looks beautiful. Now one of the things that I would do would obviously be crop this image, but I like to do all of my edits first and then crop the image. So let's come in here and let's quickly have a look at this. So let's set the white balance. It's on a gray background, so we can just click that and that's gonna make that nice and clear. And then I'm gonna bring back the highlights a little bit because that's where the skin tones live usually. And I'm gonna bring back the shadows a little bit too because that straight away has added a little bit of drama. Now the next thing I'm gonna work on is the eyes. So I take the brush tool up here, I double click effect to reset, and this is what I like to do, is boost the clarity and boost the exposure because the clarity usually makes things a little darker. So then with a nice, soft, small brush, literally, I'm just gonna paint over the eyes. Now I'm being kind of rough with it, but let's look at the before and the after. So let's just have a look at where that's taken effect. On the eyes, you can see it's exactly on the eyes, which is great. So let's, I was hitting O to do that, hit O to come away. I'm actually gonna boost the brightness a little bit more and I am gonna lift the sharpness just to get those edges in there really nice. Okay, good. So let's add a new one. And now I'm gonna work on the actual eyes because she's got lovely, dark, rich, but very dark eyes. So I want to add a little bit to these to really make them pop out. So to do that, again, I keep the clarity high and I'm actually gonna, this time I'm gonna boost the shadows because that's where that lives. And I'm just gonna draw around like this. I can avoid the middle where the pupil would be. And you're gonna see not a massive difference is made there. And you can see by sliding this, the difference isn't huge, but I don't wanna ruin the eyes. But this is the important thing. I'm actually gonna add some brown into the eyes and browns live within the reds and oranges. So if I just boost that, you can see in the eyes now, I don't wanna go too hot, too heavy on this, but somewhere around here, it's just gonna add that little bit of color to the eyes Let's just boost the exposure on this just a little, like so. So let's come out, zoom out of this, and then we'll go before and after. So already it's clean and we've now added some drama. The next thing I want to do is I want to extend this idea that it's got this soft, like this beautiful focus it going away, but I'm gonna enhance that. Oh, but before I do that, see we've got this blemish here and there's one here too. Now with children, you don't want to do a skin retouch ever. But what you do want to do is any, any issues like this, she's obviously cut her face. So you just paint that on there and it's going to select something close by. And I think that's also some dirt as opposed to a freckle. And that's cleaned that up nicely. I'm not going to edit anything else within that. So the next thing, radial filter. And I'm going to literally draw around the face like so. Nice and simple. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And I'm going to take the clarity down. Sorry, double click effect. Bring the clarity down and the sharpness to zero. I'm gonna make sure the mask is not inverted and then I'm gonna hit O to have a look at where it's hitting it. And then I can choose my feathering, okay? If I want it to be a really hard line or if I want it to have more of a feather that's going on. I'm gonna stick somewhere in the middle is gonna be good, but I don't want it to come too far onto the face. So that for me is pretty Good, but I also, I want to make sure that this hasn't gone all blurry down here. So brush, erase, and I'm literally gonna paint off her veil or robe, whatever that is, but I want it to leave that fade on the outside down the sides. So hit O, you can see it's gonna add the blur to those areas, which I think is really important. But again, I wanna do more than just that. So now if I right click, 
and I'm literally gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. But with the second one, I'm gonna pull the shadows back just a little tiny bit. It's gonna add some drama and some contrast to that. So now let's come out and let's have a look before and after. We're starting to bring this in now, which I really am loving the image. So I'm gonna boost the clarity just a little bit and the vibrance, okay. But now I'm gonna go down to the color section because I love what she's wearing, but I think personally that the color of what she's wearing can go a little bit towards the blues, okay. So more like this, I think it adds a little bit more drama. I prefer that as a color. Some of you might hate that I'm changing what she's wearing, but I personally, I think it's necessary. And then her skin tones, which I can actually make her lighter or darker. I'm just gonna lighten, no, so I'm gonna leave her skin tones, okay? What I was gonna do is her robe here, is I'm gonna make it a little bit more contrasty by splitting that. And the saturation, actually, is what I'm gonna lift the saturation of her skin tones, because she's a child, so I want her to feel alive, which is great. And pull back the saturation a little bit there. That's now looking great, great before and after. The image is starting to come alive. The next thing I'm gonna work on is the tone curve. Now, I'm gonna put my Wacom tablet away for this because it doesn't seem to do very well inside the tone curve. So, this is what I'm gonna do here. Inside the RGB, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, so it's the S curve by booting the highlights and pulling the shadows back a little bit. But I'm also gonna cut the blacks off just a little tiny bit. I'm not gonna to go too far, it's not the filmic effect that people are doing and that I actually love to do, but it's just, I just want to pull it up a little bit for a crush like here. But what I really want to do is add some browns to this. So to do that, I'm going to crush the reds like so, which is going to add the brown tones into these dark areas. So you can see here, it's a little bit red now. Okay, and I'm actually going to boost the red on the entire image by lifting up in the mid-tones just a little tiny bit. Now the next thing I'm going to do is inside the greens is I'm going to crush the greens, but I'm going to pull the greens backwards. So you see how it adds more red to it. Just a little bit though, like so. And then in the blues, now this is where I love to work is in the blues. So I'm actually going to push the blues up in the highlights and down in the shadows. So that there, and I'm actually, I think I'm gonna crush the blues too, a little. Okay, I really like what's just happened. Now I'm gonna go back into the reds. Tone curve, you often find yourself moving around it in a few different ways to make this right. Boost the highlights a little bit. There we go. I love where we just got to with that. So let's go before and after. See, now it's starting to get really dramatic. And we've just been changing a few little things, but it's all about the feeling and the emotion behind this. And I want this image to really explode off the page. So to do that, the next thing we're going to do is use this technique that dodge and burn that most of the time is done inside Photoshop. But I figured out a way to do it inside Lightroom. So basically you make the highlights lighter and the shadows darker. So we're gonna take the highlights, we're gonna put it at 100%, but we won't be leaving it there. Flow, we're gonna put around 70%. And literally, where there's highlights on the image, I'm gonna paint over it. And you'll see I'll go over it a few times so that I can really lighten up those areas where there are already highlights, okay? I'm not adding highlights um, to where they, they don't already exist. And the most important thing for this is on what she's wearing, okay? Oh, I'm gonna make sure that I'm nice and soft, pull my flow down, I overdid it a little bit on those areas. And I'm literally drawing over all of these highlighted areas, the creases in what she's wearing, okay? And I can change my brush size, so I'm adding on all of those elements. Now I think that's looking great, okay? Now what I can do is I can just duplicate this to have a greater effect. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this one back to 17, and then the first, sorry, let me delete that one. The first one here, I'm gonna pull back to about 30. And then I'll duplicate it. So by duplicating it, essentially, what that does is it means that it's now at 60. However, what I'm gonna do is this one is edit, erase, and on her face, I'm going to erase it a little bit so then it's not too dramatic on the face. The next thing 
is I'm going to do the shadows. So I reset the highlights. And for the shadows, I like to reduce the shadows and also boost the clarity. This is what I like to do. So then I'm going to go around here, all of the dark areas so under the eyes, all the way around the outside where the hairline is here. Side of the nose, here and here, and up the side of the nose. Over the mouth, and then again, all of these creases now, I want to add in the dark areas. And you're going to see what's happening to this image is now it started to add the drama to it. And it's really not the face which is what's adding the drama, it's everything that's going on with her robe or whatever. I don't know what it's called. I think it's a robe, a towel, something. So that looks great now. And again, I'll make sure that I don't go too heavy on that. Okay. And, but I think it looks great. I'm actually gonna duplicate this one too, like so. And I'm gonna reduce it. The reason why I duplicate it is because I can see areas where it's gone too much, like down at the bottom here. That was just a little bit too much, so I can just bring it back off. Okay, so now let's come out and let's look at the before and the after. Look at the drama that's in here. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to the camera calibration and inside the reds, you see I can move things around and that's affecting the entire image. I'm gonna pull it to the left slightly on the hue and I'm gonna desaturate it just a little bit. And that now looks great. And I'm gonna see what the blue does, okay? I'm gonna move that to the right actually and I'm gonna boost the saturation. Great. Next thing that I'm going to be doing here, the final thing actually is I'm gonna take the radio brush tool and I'm gonna make a circle around her here and I'm gonna make sure it's not inverted and essentially I'm gonna bring the shadows down and I'm gonna bring the whole exposure down around her face. So now it's brought in the final level of drama that I love. But what I need to do is brush, erase around 50% and on her robe thing, I need to paint it out because I don't want that to be too dramatic on there. And I'm actually gonna pull back the sharpness and the clarity on that. So you can see now, now let's, let's come out of that and go before and after. The difference is dramatic. And the final thing is I'm gonna do two different crops for you. So I've got this on here so it shows me essentially my thirds. So here I'm going to hold down shift so I keep the same aspect ratio. I'm gonna drop the eye directly in there and I'm gonna make sure the mouth is sitting right in the middle of the middle one. And that's gonna cut off a bit of the top of the head. I think it's cut off too much. So something like this, you always wanna cut off the top of heads in portraits. It means that the focus stays on the eyes and the face. That for me, now it looks so beautiful. But if I duplicate this, because I want to show you something, virtual copy, and I'm gonna come back into this crop mode. And what I'm actually gonna do is show you this little technique that I like in cropping, where you have the eye smack, sorry, you're gonna put the nose on that thirds line, okay? And so I'm actually gonna shrink it down even more. I'm gonna put the nose there and the eye right on the edge. But I wanna keep in a little bit of her her outfit there so that the this thing is right between the eyes now when you come into this if you look now it's got this it pulls you in and draws you into this image and it is so dramatic so this is the two different versions that i created in just a few minutes so let's come back to this one let's look at the before and the after huge difference so that's how i would edit this portrait in Lightroom. I love the edit and I love the initial image from Ali Sabi. Thank you so much. And if you like the tutorial, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe because I've got loads more tutorials on their way. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Thank you. Badoom.